Hi guys, how you guys doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. I really appreciate it. It means the world to me. Before we start today's video though, could you do me a favor? Could you please hit the thumbs up button, also the subscribe button, and the notification button? It only helps me out in the YouTube algorithm and it gets my videos seen by more people. It helps my channel grow. Thank you so much. Today, we're going to talk about Rosa Linux. More specifically, the iteration of it called Rosa Desktop Fresh. It is a Mandriva fork uh, that was created by a Russian community. Now, being that it's Russian, we I'm this channel's agnostic based on whatever's going on out there. I just put out Linux content and I want to focus on the fact that this is actually a pretty good distribution. It does not have a lot of stuff in it. It has very limited stuff in it. It does have a office suite in it, which I don't agree with. I think that no distribution should have an office suite in it. It should be one that is put in by the actual end user. But other than that, it's actually pretty light. It's got some pretty sensible tools in it, but it's, again, it's another one of those distributions that is multiples of, except for the fact that it's based off of Mandriva. It does use RPM and DNF. Uh, for its package managers. So there you go. Let's go ahead and take a look at it and see what you guys think. So this is Rosa Linux 12.3, which is the fresh distribution. Uh, it is a Russian made distribution. Let's go ahead and pop over to their web page. And here it is for 12, which, if we go down here, they've got multiple uh, distributions. Uh, most of them are enterprise level, like the security one, the virtualization one. Also, the Chrome one, Cobalt, and Barium. Fresh is the one that we're taking a look at. In the Fresh one, um, it is available in GNOME. It is available in KDE Plasma. It is available in LXQT. It is available in XFCE. This is a distribution based off of Open Mandriva, or Mandriva, sorry, Mandriva. It is RHEL-based. Rel it has... Um, uh, DNF Dragora installed as well as RPM and DNF in, in as well. DNF Dragora is basically the graphical package manage, uh, package, uh, uh manager, uh, that, uh, is used with the, uh, RPM stuff. So, uh, that being said, there is a lot under the hood, actually. Um, they don't have, uh, a release cycle that is as prevalent as most other distributions they take long times in between their release cycles like the last one was like october 31st i believe of 2022 i believe let's look at their um wikipedia october 31st of 2022 that is correct so it has it is available in the fresh of kde plasma 5 gnome LXQT and XFCE. Also, it has its own Rosa image writer and its media player, which actually, when you look at it, that is actually incorrect. For here, there is no Rosa media player. There is SM player, MPV player, there is Camuso, Elisa, and Audacity. So, uh, Elisa is the actual KDE suite music player for that, but what I don't understand is why they didn't just use the standard go-to that everybody else does. It is an all-in-one. Just use VLC because VLC could be a, a picture viewer, a video player. It's basically it handles every multimedia and every codec there is out there. Um, it is a fork of the French distribution Mandriva Linux, which is I've already said. Uh, it uh, it was before its bankruptcy that they actually started doing. Um, Rosa uh, and 20, Mandriva 2011 and it was also based on Rosa as well uh, Mag OS Linux is based on Rosa as well so there's a Mag OS 
out there, which I think I'm going to take a look at. I've never heard of that, and it'd be interesting to see what's what's going on with that. Uh, and just see, you know, what macOS is about. Either way, that is a little bit about Rosa Linux. Um, like I said, this is the desktop fresh. So now let's go ahead and take an actual look at it. As you can see, I do not have it in virtual. You see right here, I have OBS running on it right now. I am on actual hardware with this one. Uh, over here on the left-hand side, it's your standard KDE Plasma desktop. It's got the standard bar at the bottom, application launchers on the left, along with the pin launchers and your virtual desktops, which, by the way, you can use and interact with using your uh, middle scroll mouse. You can go over here is your settings on the on the right hand side of the panel are your other pinned document or pinned applications as well. This is your system settings, which is if we look at it, I've already set it to dark. It came in the light theme, but I didn't want it light. I like dark. Um, this is uh, the actual standard KDE Plasma, you know, settings menu. No questions there. It's got a recycle bin though, actually, right there, which as you can see, there they are. If you right click on it, you can interact on it, I believe, and empty. Yep, you click empty, empty trash, boom, gone. Then it's got any open applications that you have running right here, like I have OBS Studio, which is funny. I do this. Oh, check that out. Uh, that's funny. Then this right here is an actual package updater, and these are all packages that need to be updated. And I don't want to do any of that. Clipboard right here, then you've got your phone, which has got all of your actual inputs. I have many inputs. My audio box right now, you can see is what's recording me right now, which is my PreSonus audio box. Uh, this is um, any devices that are connected externally will be there. Um, for the keyboard layout, and of course, your microphone. It tells you what the, what's using your microphone, that you're actually being recorded. And then, of course, this is your network connection type. Then you have your hidden notifications, such as, you know, your actual notifications, your vaults, power management, all that good stuff. Standard, standard KDE. Like I said, standard KDE. Right here's your interactive calendar. Well, not interactive, but you can look and see what you have here. Uh, and then uh, right here is how you could put it to sleep, but we're not going to do that. So that is basically a rundown of the actual desktop environment when you look at it and you log in. Now you hit the application launcher. So here we go. Under favorites, you have the K, you have color paint with K, and then console, and then Libre Office Writer. They, as I said in the intro, they have installed an office suite, which to me, that's a knock. Straight up, that's a knock. I don't think that anybody should be uh, putting any office suites in simply because nine times out of ten, it's not the office suite that the user would want or even possibly need if they actually use an office suite. And most people don't want them on their desk on, on their PCs anyhow. Um, so I wouldn't use or computer, not PC. Uh, I wouldn't put it in there let the user put that in also it cuts down on your bloat for your actual iso uh so that's just a win-win all the way around so they have libra office installed based on that for all applications of course you go here you can see everything but we're not going to do that under internet they have chromium web browser as their default browser let's click on it open it up let's go to here go to about and we're on version 1.6 116.05 584.5.140 official build for Rosa apparently 2021.1 interesting so there's that that's what they're using I believe that's semi up to date or stable at least I should say uh, then you have I don't use chromium so I'm not sure as to what the current version is but anyhow there then they have kgit which is a download manager qubit torrent which is your torrent downloader telegram Desktop, which is actually a cool app. It's a great little messaging app. And then Yandex Browser. Uh, then you have under Office, they have obviously LibreOffice, which we talked about. Graphics, they have GIMP, Gwenview, Color Chooser, and Color Paint, both K and C. Well, K, C Color Chooser is K Color, K with the K and C. But uh, and the document scanners, you know, standard document, and GIMP is what GIMP is. Under sound and video, like I, we've already looked at, you know, the ones of no OBS I installed, but the SM player, SM tube is okay. MPV's my one that I like to use, uh, but I do also have VLC installed. Uh, they inst it comes with Caden Live right off the box, which is weird that it didn't come with OBS, but it comes with Caden Live, Camuso, which is your video cam uh, utility. Uh, for webcam, 
uh, much like Cheese was for Gnome. Eliza's a music player, and it's got Audacity. Uh, under Tools, um, you've got DNF Dragora here. you got Crashed Process Viewer, Disks Configuration, Dolphin File Manager, File Lite, so you have a graphical user interface to show you what kind of space and hardware you're using. Hardware Probe. They've got HTOP. If we open up HTOP, let's make this bigger. And you can see right now, even with OBS running, I'm using 1.5 gig, 1.5 one gigabytes of freaking RAM out of 32 gigs. So that is actually a pretty good little, pretty good little lightweightness that's going on there with this. So I, I really can't complain. I mean, that's pretty cool. Um, then you got your info center. If you click on that, that's going to tell you Plasma 527. Uh, QT is 5.15. Kernel 6.1. So it's a more up-to-date kernel. Um, the uh, it's running on XORG, X11 window manager or uh, display uh, server. So, and then of course it's got my my uh, actual CPU specs and, and video card specs. Uh, so there's that. Uh, they got KCalc, um, uh, partition manager for KDE. They have console with the K. They've got Crusader, which is a terminal. Well, it is a I want to say terminal base, but it that's commander. But this is a file manager. Um, another one besides Dolphin that you could use in there. A lot of people like this one as well. Um, then you have uh, KWrite as a text editor, plain text editor, uh, which I'm surprised they don't have Kate installed. They've got the Rosa image writer, which they talked about. If you click on that, put in your actual password uh, because, you know, you're going to do stuff at root level. This is... This looks like a reskinned OpenSUSE um, image writer. The OpenSUSE image writer is what it looks like. But either way, there's that. Um, what else? Uh, services configuration. So I guess this is a little tool that, once again, you're going to be doing this at root level. Uh, you're doing this at root level. This is probably going to tell you which services is running, if it even opens. Oh, there you go. Yep. So you can toggle them on and put them on the boot or whatever. You can start stop them at will right now if you want. It's got System D installed, I'm pretty sure. Yep, System D right here. So it's using System D. Um, and it's using regular bash. So... System monitor, system settings, update applet, which we looked at, and user Drake manager for your local users and groups. Uh, for games, it comes with some games already installed. Mahjong, uh, K-Mahjong, K-Mines, Color Lines, uh, and which looks like to be Connect 4, and K-Patience, K which is solitary. Under education, you got LibreOffice Math, and Sciences, you have LibreOffice Math as well. So let's actually open up a terminal, do the uname R to see. Make it bigger. Yep, it's the generic kernel 6.1.46, so uh, built for Rosa Linux, optimized, and it's 686, 84. So yeah, oh well, we can look at NeoFetch too. And we're on Plasma Breeze. The, I, the icons are Rosa Dark, and uh, that's it. That's all we need to look at here. So uh, yeah, that is basically one smooth look at Rosa Linux. So there you have it, Rosa Linux. Tell me what you think. It's based off of a very nice stable distribution of Linux, uh, forked actually, but nonetheless, the only thing is, is it's Russian based and Russian, you know, maintained. Other than that, it's actually pretty good. So leave a comment down below, thumbs up the video, Tell me if you plan on using it or if you've used it before, what your thoughts were on it or what your um, experience was with it. Do me a favor. If you recommend it to somebody or don't recommend it, tell me the reason why. Other than that, you guys keep doing what you do. Stay blessed. Keep on Linuxing. And have a great day. And above all, I'll see you in the next one.